you just saw us make a margarita, and we are super excited about this drink. Very excited. It's one of our favorites. All time. Anytime we're at my place or Nate's place or, you know. It's always Marg's. After work. Yeah. We love a margarita. Yeah. That said, in this video, you saw two different versions. One is the quick and dirty version, which if you're not a cocktail nerd or anything like that, that's probably how you've seen most of them made. It's just, it's super simple. It's just tequila, probably triple sec, some, some sour mix, some sour mix and a salted rim. That's yeah. it. It's quick. It's dirty. Get it. Just, you just get it out there. That said, we're, you know, the margarita is actually a very nuanced cocktail as are all cocktails, but it's, it's an awesome drink if, if it's made properly. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll tell you a bit about, you know, we prefer to use Reposado tequila mm -hmm. and agave nectar. Mm -hmm. Nate, maybe talk yeah, about Yeah, I mean, when you talk about the different types of tequila, you obviously you have plata, so unrested. This is silver. This is right out of the still. It's feisty, young, peppery. You have Reposado tequila, um, which means uh, rested. Reposado means to rest. And that's going to age anywhere from a couple months to six months um, up in oak barrels, usually former Jack Daniels barrels, and that's, this imparts like a really lovely caramel and vanilla soft marshmallow, marshmallow yeah. profile to the tequila. Mm -hmm. And it's personally our favorite. I mean, it is subjective. Some people like their margaritas young and vibrant and citrusy and feisty. I just find that the Reposado just kind of helps lend to the agave sweetener, which for sweeteners, if you have access to it, it is great to use rather than simple syrup. Uh, agave is just richer. It's got that kind of honey-like consistency. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it really helps kind of take on that citrus, the lime juice really well and just make a, a really beautiful um, margarita. The ones that we love anyway. Yeah. Uh, that said, agave nectar, just, just a tidbit for your own personal information. A lot of, it's a lot of health, health nuts are really big, oh, agave nectar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually quite high on the glycemic index, so mm -hmm. um, you don't want to consume too much of it. Obviously, moderation is key. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great when you can, you can match a sweetener with the, the sort of the characteristics that are inherent in the spirit. So, if it grows together, it goes together. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, so also we should talk about the, the salt rim. Mm. We, um, we always want to do half, half of the rim, half rim because you want to give the guests the option. The other note uh, here is that you also want it on the outside of the glass. In cocktails, we try to, we want to control the behavior as much as possible when it's in front of the guest. And if you, if you salt the inside of the rim, that drink is changing over time. Mm -hmm. So as it's sitting there in front of them, the drink's getting saltier and saltier, might be good, but we just, we don't want to take that chance. It's so. a variable that you can eliminate. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, traditionally it's served on the rocks. Uh, some people like it up. Some people like it with egg white in the seventies, uh, serving a margarita with egg whites was very common. Um, it is flexible. It will take on all those different iterations of itself. Um, but the timeless classic tried, test, and true is, is on the rocks. If you guys have a really powerful blender and you want to make a really good one using the agave nectar, uh, you're using Cointreau um, or Grand Marnier if you're talking about a Cadillac margarita. Um, Cadillac, when you hear that term, you'll hear it at bars. It essentially just means swapping out the Cointreau for the Grand Marnier. But there is a unique opportunity there for uh, you to the guest, which is... Yeah, you can... This is a great chance to upsell, um, which, you know, we don't, we don't like them to make that our, our thing. We don't want to always try to be upselling people, but when opportunities present themselves, I mean, if somebody wants to ball out on a, on a cocktail, then they want the best. So offer them the opportunity. If they say, I want a, I want a Cadillac mar margarita, mm -hmm. well, so you're stepping up the, the orange liqueur scram, Marnier, offer to step up the tequila as well. I mean, um... If you know if you're a full-fledged bar with a full-fledged back bar, then you definitely have At some. one or two different. Definitely tequilas. have some tequilas yeah. that are better than what's what's in your well, and mm -hmm. that's a great chance to, to offer that to the guest. Mm -hmm. uh, going with the margarita, there's a little bit of history there, and I understand you have a, a tiny oh, yeah. story about it. Yeah. So, uh, I I remember quite vividly when I was learning about cocktails, and I remember learning the margarita. Uh, I remember reading this story on the internet about this jazz singer, Peggy Lee. Uh, she just ordered a drink without, uh, she said a tequila drink without a lot of fuss in it, something like mm. that. And uh, what I loved about the story was the bartender simply repurposed a classic cocktail, which was the sidecar. Mm. And I love this because this is essentially what making cocktails is. You're just kind of repurposing classics. Dust and, them off a little bit. Yeah, it's just <laughs> Mr. Potato Head just changing, you know, ingredients here, making substitutions there. Um, so what this, this bartender did, he took a sidecar, which is cognac, Cointreau, lemon, and sugar, and he simply replaced all those ingredients with the exception of the, the Cointreau. So he replaced the uh, cognac for tequila, 
he replaced the uh, lemon for lime and he replaced the, the sugar for salt. And this was a great way for me to consolidate that recipe, the sidecar recipe, and also all the other drinks that are in that family. So you have White Lady, Kamikaze, a mm -hmm. uh, whole bunch of other drinks. And if you can make any one of these drinks balanced, you can make them all beautiful and balanced. The family that he's alluding to is um, the family of Sours. Uh, the first one way back when was the Brandy Crusta that led to the inception, again, just tweaking, modifying over the years, uh, that led to the sidecar. And nowadays, the most modern iteration of the Sours, the Margarita, um, and one of the best all time. Yeah, absolutely.